Hello, my name is Jeremy Short, and I'm the Vehicle Chief Engineer for the Chevrolet Bull EV. Long before General Motors let me engineer cars and trucks, and even before I got a college degree in engineering, I was a kid who liked math and science. I had a habit of taking things apart and seeing how they work, and then trying to put them back together again, with some level of success. I was very interested in cars, especially race cars. I bought multiple RC cars, I built them, uh, some gas, some electric, and today I'm going to show you the two of them and show you how they are both similar and different from each other. I have two RC cars with me today. One is gas powered and the other is battery electric. So how are the gas and the electric different? Let's start with the energy source. As the name suggests, the gas car uses a liquid fuel which is stored in this fuel tank in the center of the vehicle. This isn't the same gas you put in a passenger car but it is a liquid fuel and it's used in a similar manner. The liquid fuel has to be mixed with air which comes through this air filter and that mixture of fuel and air enter the combustion chamber of the motor. The fuel air mixture ignites and combusts inside the motor. The pressure created drives a piston which drives a crankshaft and is connected to the drive line. What's left over we call exhaust which then exits the motor and travels through this muffler and then out the end by and into the atmosphere. The speed of this car is controlled by a mechanical mechanism which is connected to this air valve. This servo motor opens the air valve and allows more air in which drives more of the fuel air mixture into the motor. To stop the vehicle, the servo reverses and actually closes that air valve and applies pressure to a brake that's on the other side of the engine. For the electric car, we'll start with the battery, which is where we store the energy for the vehicle. RC battery packs vary, but the ones I use are 7.4 volts and around 5,000 milliamp hour, or about 37 watt hours of capacity. That's how much electrical energy the pack can hold. Electrical current from the battery pack flows from the pack to an electronic speed controller. That speed controller takes input from the controller, back to the trigger here, and determines how much current to send to the motor. But inside the motor, the electric current creates a magnetic field that forces magnets mounted to a shaft to rotate. The torque, or force to turn, that is created increases with increased current. To decelerate, or even stop the vehicle, that electric current is reduced, eliminated, or even reversed. You may have noticed there are a few parts missing from the electric car. First, there's no air filter or air valve. Electric cars don't require air. Also, there's no brake mechanism on this particular vehicle because the electric motor is the brake. And finally, there's no exhaust pipe because there's no exhaust, no emissions, and no noise coming from it. I enjoy racing both of these cars, but I can say that only one of them I can operate on the indoors because one, the gas car is very loud, two, the exhaust requires a lot of fresh air, and three, the fuel system can get a little messy. And we actually use many of the same concepts in our Chevrolet Bull EV. Like we have four-wheel independent suspension, just like this model, to absorb the bumps in the road. We have a steering mechanism in the front that's electronically assisted, controlled by a steering wheel instead of a wheel on the controller. The driver uses a pedal to accelerate the vehicle instead of a trigger, and a brake pedal instead of reversing that trigger, but the concepts are very similar. The Bolt system does have a brake system unlike this particular electric vehicle. We don't always need those brakes because we have a regenerative system that under moderate braking conditions will actually turn the vehicle's forward momentum into electricity and slow the vehicle and store that energy in the pack for use further down the road. Speaking of the battery pack, RC battery packs vary, but think of more than 1,500 of these packs inside the Bolt EV. Much like the RC model and in the Bolt TV, electrical energy flows from the pack into an electronic speed controller that controls the amount of current that goes into our motor and controls the speed at which we travel down the road. I want to thank you for watching. I hope it uh, helps you understand electric cars a little bit better and how they compare to gas vehicles. And hopefully I piqued your interest in building an RC car 
Um, we built one of those now, and, and hopefully later on in the future, you'll want to come uh, help us design and build the passenger cars of the future.